So today joining us is Dr. Pony Ale, and he will introduce himself. Thank you, Norma. And uh, it's such an honor to be here. I would like to thank Afrimax uh, R for inviting me. And uh, thank you for all the people who have joined the talk. And um, I think because we are, um, it's we probably, it's normally an R talk and uh, because of the topic I got, we got uh, the interest of many other people in different area. So this will also be a great opportunity to, to show case of what R can do in the in the healthcare and, and in the clinical, in our clinical practice. So I will, uh, this is just the overview about what we'll talk about. We have a long way to go, but I will try to be short and I will not go probably uh, too much into detail, but uh, this is uh, just an overview. We tried by starting to, defining some key concepts. So for the doctors in the room or the, the people who knows exactly what is uh, prevalence and potential and all those kind of concepts, don't mind it. Um, it's supposed to be open for everyone as well. So, and like I need Norma to get the grabs of everything. Um, and uh, we now go to data manipulation, we show some R code and all those things. And it's also an opportunity to raise our awareness about hypertension in Africa. So who is Boni? I'm, I'm a medical doctor, a medical statistician, and epidemiologist. And it, that means I did the training in all those areas. And uh, why? Because I found it uh, very critical for me to have um, um, a cross cross. Um, skills in all those areas to be a, a, a good physician and scientist. And that's why I practice in hospital as well as a doctor. And I work in research projects across Africa in uh, um, high profile uh, clinical trials. And I work also as a biostatistician and data scientist um, in, bio in uh, cardiovascular research in, in Nigeria. I've up to date published 17 papers in high uh, profile international scientific journal and i was i've been awarded for by some organization i got a grant by from um, uh, american thoracic society and also recently i've been awarded as emerging leaders for um, cardiovascular disease research by the world health federation which um uh, uh, it's um, a leading organization on, on heart disease. So I'm a father and uh, I'm a father of twins. I have two kids of three years old and I'm a husband, I'm a mentee. So I sit, I, I, I am being, I'm being mentored and I'm still being mentored by, by, by people in different areas. And I'm also a mentor to many. So let's start by some housekeeping. Um, let's, let's see, um, what is actually the prevalence? Because we'll talk about today the, the prevalence of hypertension. So if you see this pool, um, I will use this, uh, you can see the pool and this pool is actually like a pool of all the disease that we have in the community. So we talk about hypertension here. And in this pool, we have um, the dropping of, of some water coming in. This is the new cases of, of, of the disease. It's called incidence of the disease. And while we are there in the pool, some people are, uh, some water are dropping off and it's people who, who died and some are evaporating, they, they recovered. So it's, 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 a, it's basically the numbers of existing cases of the disease in the population. I hope putting that where it's clear for, for all. What is hypertension? The uh, hypertension is, uh, first of all, the blood pressure, it's a fast force of blood against the inner wall of our arteries, and the which is the major blood vessel in the body. When you have a high blood pressure, it means that the pressure of that uh, the blood pressure it's uh, it has passed some cutoff, which I don't want to go to into details here. But they there is a there is a they are cut off in clinical practice that we used to say okay now you have hypertension based on this we can put put you on treatment. However, if you have hypertension and you are at home you won't feel anything most of the time. You can't see it as well. It's not like the other disease like oh I know that I am feeling this, so it that's why it's a silent killer. 
it can actually be there for a long time. And the persistent high blood pressure can impact negatively a key uh, organ in your body, which are the heart, the brain, your eyes, your kidney, and others. So if that happens, then you, 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 are, you are really in trouble. So how big is the thing in Africa? We usually don't hear people talk about hypertension in Africa because we've been talking all the time about infectious disease and especially with the surge of emission, emerging infectious disease. But how, however, Sub-Saharan Africa is experiencing currently a surge in burden of cardiovascular disease. And in um, 2019, it has been clearly uh, defined that 1 million death was attributed to, attributable to cardiovascular disease. Uh, it also said that it will overtake infectious disease in the coming years, in the coming decade. And this is a, a big challenge because um, we are facing a change in our epidemiologic uh, context, which is called epidemiologic transition in which we are, which, which are triggered by the fact that we are westernizing more, we are having new lifestyles, we, we sit more, we, we eat more junk food. And this, this is uh, in the big cities you always see key. I'm not, I'm not going to call any name, but you can see chips and chicken everywhere. <laughs> and, and this is something that we like a lot. But we have to be aware that this is changing how the disease are emerging in our context. And hypertension is actually one of the strongest risk factor of cardiovascular disease. And it's, much, it's a major premature, uh, cause of premature death worldwide, not only in Africa. But when you come to Africa, the, the prevalence of hypertension is actually very high. It's up to 27% in our region, which is something that's maybe surprising for many. And in the, in the, in the developed countries, it's now like less of 18%. So many of our patients have, have not even been treated because few of them got, get treatment. 18% of the, the patient get treatment. And among them, just 7% of them uh, are controlled which are like they need to implement, a, to, to do implementation of timely and appropriate strategy for, for diagnosis. This is, this is critical. So what are the risk factors for hypertension? Come on, for those doctors in the house, this is just something classical for them, but it, it, they are modifying risk factors and they are also the one that you cannot modify. But these are all individuals. We, we talk about unhealthy diets. We talk about um, people who don't do physical exercise. You, you, you actually easily forget to do physical exercise. People who consume tobacco and alcohol. If you are overweight, you don't watch your weight. It can happen also to you. But now, those are individual risk factors. So beyond that, we have also other factors which are emerging from, from the recent research, which are also the environmental, the, the things that are not controlled at your individual level, which, um, which it can be difficult to, to handle. And this is not something that we have been talking about a lot, but season, seasons can have an impact on, on your hypertension. And studies have shown that in, in, in Western countries, but unfortunately we have not conducted any here. The, it's surprising that humidity, the rainfall, and the daylight can, can, can have impact on, on your hypertension. And that, that's also something that we may not be aware about it. And the household cell pollution that we have already, the the air pollution outside, the green space that we have, uh, the forest and all those things can actually have impact on your, on, on, on your hypertension. And understanding now the tem temporal trend and the geographic and the seasonal pattern of hypertension may inform the delivery of targeted community health intervention in, in, our, in our settings. This is critical when we are in the context where we, we have handled, we are, we are trying, we are putting all the energy to handle the individual um, level um, issues. But we can now uh, try to see beyond the individual and, and go to the community level if you want to have uh, an impact in the community. 
because also the social and anthropological factors can have an impact on, on, on our health behavior. So you can be in a, in a country where people don't actually usually take fruit or take vegetables, uh, and uh, you may not know that you are having a healthy diet. And where people don't run, like it's not common for people to run. So you, you will feel weird if you wake up every morning and start running. So those kind of aspects also are all uh, related to our environment. And yesterday was the World Heart Day, and <laughs> it's fortunate that we are doing the, the talk today. Uh, it's an opportunity for everyone to stop and consider how best we can use heart for humanity, for nature, and, and for our, ourselves. And trying to, to, to control cardiovascular disease is something that matters for every one of us, for everyone whose heart is beating. So that's this is the call from the World Heart Federation, and it's, it's critical if you want to control um, cardiovascular disease. So geospatial uh, uh, analysis are, are critical also in, in, the, in, the, in our fight to, to cardiovascular disease. But what are the challenges? <laughs> so this is where the, the, the rubber beat the road be, because it's, it's kind of very difficult for most of the researcher to be interested in, in doing such analysis because there's, there's, there's no way that you can see um, longitudinal geospatial health data um, on hypertension. It's, it's, it's not common. There are data on other disease, but less on non-communicable disease, especially the cardiovascular disease. And we have the demographic health survey, which has collected geospatial data. Well, that's good, but there's no data on the hypertension apart from few countries where there is recently collected data. When the data is collected about uh, blood pressure, it's just a, a subsample of the, the population that has um, been um, surveyed. So there's no, there's the second biggest um, survey that we have in Africa is a step survey. The step survey have been collecting very um, powerful data on non-communicable disease, but unfortunately, we don't have geospatial data in there, which is difficult to do, which makes it difficult to do a proper geospatial analysis and link the individual to the environment. So to do our talk, what have we tried to do? We, we, had, we have tried to, to, to see what we can we can we can bring out here and um, the who step survey that I was talking about which is um, a, a survey that is happening in 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 countries it's supposed to be happening uh, frequently but some countries have done it like uh, in, since 2008 and they have never repeated it or some in 2015. And we will use the survey of Benin, not because I'm from Benin Republic, uh, but um, I, I, I will use the data of Benin be, just only because we, they have two data points, which is the 2008 and 2015 uh, prevalence data. In the other countries, it's very hard to find uh, two, uh, two for two years. And the second thing is that even if you find it, it's just a subset of the, of the, the population. It's not the nationwide uh, survey. We have used the GPS data of aspirative region of Benin, and we got that from humanitarian data exchange. Uh, I, I put the link there for those who want. And uh, um, we now start uh, dirty things, which um, I know most of my colleagues may not like, uh, but just, just, just for the interest of this talk, for you to know that it's not very difficult to actually use R and do uh, very interesting things. Uh, as a as a physician or as a nurse or, or and a healthcare provider, and I'm talking also for, for the software developers who are already well versed in programming. So we start by cleaning our data. We start by manipulating our data, and here it's um, installed. I try to install all the packages that we need. I will go through the code with you because the interest of this talk as well is to allow people to be able to do what we do online and replicate it on their own. So this kind of like uh, kind of webinar and training. So this is the packages that we use, the, they are cited there. And I like to use Pacman Load because you don't need to install each package and also call the library. It will do it on, on, on its own. It will do both, both, both things at the same time. And after, um, uh, installing the packages, 
let now load the, our data. I've already went ahead and the data that I got from the report of the step survey, I put it in, in this uh, the, the Excel sheet and uh, we have the prevalence data from Benin and we now have the, um, the geospatial data from, from humanitarian data extend website, which will help us. Let's move on to, to clean our data and merge both data sets, the prevalence data and, and, and the geospatial data. Here is the, um, the I, I, I use the function uh, to, to now uh, clean the data. So, um, oops, sorry. So, while, while we just, why I prefer to use function because you can reuse it easily. Uh, and you don't need to, to, to have a long code. So here, and also because I, I use targets, I don't know if, if you are used to that kind of workflow, it's kind of easy for you to, 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 to have a very short code. So this is the, the function that I use. I call this the name of the function clean uh, Benin department data. And I put in the, I, I started by changing the name of, of one administrative uh, area, which is Atakora. For me, being from Benin is not written that way. So I've changed it, but it's not a big thing. It's just a small uh, data cleaning process. And now I've merged both data with left joint. And I know people who are uh, user are very familiar with that. Then I join um, the, the, the prevalent data with uh, the administrative uh, data, the geospatial administrative data, and then call the, 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 the final data set match. Great, so without um, delaying, let's uh, compare the change in prevalence of hypertension in 2008 and uh, the one in 2015, according to the administrative region. Here's the code, we, we use this um, function to, to, to do the, the map. And I don't know, sorry, uh, Quato is still very, very new for me. Uh, I did the presentation in Quato and I keep going back instead of going front. So um, yeah, so we are talking about making uh, the prevalence map and we, for those, uh, for, for the package I've, I've already put in there already, you can call the function TM shape and you, you 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 can use um, also the polygons that you have in your data set, the longitude and the, the latitude and all those uh, information about the prevalence and the information that you have on the department and the layout, you can use them and, and have this function. It will help you. You just need to call the function, put the data in, call the year that you want to do. To do. If we had like 10 years, it could be more interesting, but we just have two years. So we put the two years in, and then we have now a faceted uh, prevalence map that we just arrange those two maps together. Here you go. This is the result. And we have this map about the prevalence of hypertension from 2008 and 2015. From your left, you have the 2008, the first one, and the second one is 2015. So you could see clearly uh, what's going on there. <laughs> um, the, the, let me show you the legend. The, in the legend, you can see that uh, you are when you are going from bottom to up, the darker is the color, the higher is the prevalence. So if you have a darker um, uh, color, it's a, it's a higher prevalence. So here we can see in, um, in this region called Mono and uh, this one called uh, Weme, we can see that the, it's, the, it's very dark. It means the prevalence is quite high. And when we come to 2018, Note that in this region, it was quite light. It was around 20 and, and 15. But when we will come to 2015, suddenly um, the mono has cleared up. We may has cleared up. But let me change the, the color. And oh, it's got not sure. <laughs> this region have suddenly been dense which uh, clearly show you that there, is, there have been reduction but increase in hypertension in certain, in certain region or, or Bogu, uh, Libori and, 
which are the northern parts of, of Benin. So this is visually interesting for you to see the change in uh, hypertension prevalence from one year to another. How can we do this um, differently? Um, we can actually try to, to put in some graph inside the map. I, this is I'm, I'm not I don't, I'm not sure if this was something uh, old as that. I think it's it's quite new. Being able to insert the graph within the map. So here's the code. We create a function to 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 insert the map, and the first thing is to get your department information on. This is the only thing that is new here is to get the coordinate of each region, but by getting the centroid, it is simple to do it with ST centroid. So it's it's very straightforward. Um, I think R is you just sit on the back of the giant and they, they just bring you. It's it's very simple. The the department centroid that we have already, we get the we make sure that the plot that we have have the same. Um, um, Y axis uh, maximum level. So that's why we, we created this, this line. And then we will nest, uh, we, we want to nest the map within the, we want to nest the plot within the map. So this is the, the code for the, for, the, for the plots that we want. We want just simple bar plot. The, don't mind about the, the code is quite straightforward. It's just ggplot. And, um, we will now put this code within the map. So this is, this is the, the map, we create it with the inset. Uh, so this is the nested plot that we have done previously. So with this function, you just put, you just insert, and then you call, you call this function, and then you, you are good to go. So what's the result? Here, is, here it is. Oof. Well, it's interesting and, and uh, it's it's um, visually appealing for us when we are in the northern part of Benin, because here you have larger surfaces, so this allows the plot to be in, and you see clearly that the blue one is the first uh, year and this one is the second year. So if if you can see that uh, from year to year how the trend of hypertension prevalence. Unfortunately, you can't have much idea of what's happening here, uh, simply because you have areas where the, in Benin is quite skewed down, down there on the map. So it may not be interesting if you want to use this kind of uh, um, technique with, uh, with uh, a, a map which has a very small spaces. Uh, small areas, I mean, so it's, it could be good to have it when they are, they are larger areas. But it's uh, it's worth trying, and uh, I, I like the, the future. Um, it, it's still uh, showing us the same trend of what we have seen. And then we will try to do it again in a different way. I. I it will be interesting for us to see the change quantitatively. What's the quantitative uh, change from 2008 and 2015. Have we moved from um, one point, two point, three point, or have we, have we reduced from 10 point or not? So here we will just calculate the difference between 2008 prevalence and 2015. And then we do, we do, we do um, the math and with that math, we'll be able to plot a map in which we will have a shading of, of colors, which will show us from zero to, to, to plus infinite and from, from zero to minus. So here's, uh, here's the, the function that I've used. And uh, first of all, I just calculate the difference uh, be, uh, in prevalence between both here, which is uh, quite straightforward. You just need to use methods. I just make my life easier by pivoting the data before, um, because it was on the, on the long format, I just pivot it to the wider format. But I mean, that's, I'm, I'm just lazy. <laughs> so, and uh, you can now move ahead and join this difference to the geo data that you have. So you just use left joint and you, you can join both data sets. And later on, you create your map. 
which is now using the same uh, TM shape and it's straightforward. So you, you don't need to struggle at all. You change, you put your, your, your title and all those beautifying things. You can do it <laughs> as you want, as you like. So here you go. This is the, the map with diverging shape. I tried to put the, the green color because green is a good thing. So when it's reduction in hypertension, you have the, the, the greener you have, um, the greener the color, the, the more reduction you have on the prevalence of hypertension in each region. And the, the, the more it's become orange, the, the more you are having an increase in the prevalence of hypertension uh, from 2008 to 2015. So here we can see that this region is, quite, is doing quite well because uh, it is, it's very green, it's women, which it means that they've been, they have been a good, a positive change, although it's negative number, there have been a positive change in the prevalence of hypertension in that region. What has happened probably, uh, you can see also the same thing in this region, which are mostly on this south part of, of Benin. I will tell you later on about this south part. And uh, we can see the, the, this part in the middle here, in the Atlantic region, uh, we, the changes are going in the negative way. It means that there have been increase of the prevalence of the hypertension in that in that side. So when you go to the north, where the more you go up, the higher the prevalence is, uh, the, the increase is becoming with people in Aliburi and uh, Bogu having the the higher prevalence. Well, this is interesting because in one map, you can actually see the changes. It's, it's, it's easy to read. It's, it's um, it, well, it's um, easy to interpret as well. And you can decide on what to do. So zero, I, I, this is what I've just explained. Now, I'll just keep this map and, uh, and trying to, to do for us to, to see what we can get from this kind of um, uh, mapping, very simple, because we are not going all the way to, to modeling, unfortunately, because we don't have much data. So it's it's clear that we have hypertension in, in, in Benin, which is um, very high prevalence. So, and this is probably the case in many regions in, in, uh, in, in West Africa and in Africa, because the burden of hypertension has increased from 2008 and 2015, and we have clearly seen it, that the burden have moved from the Southern uh, to Northern region of, of Benin. And um, we know that the Southern region have the capital city, but the Atlantic part has not really uh, have a reduction. It has been keeping increasing because it's more uh, industrialized and uh, more cities also in some regions. And the northern part of Benin has started being a bit, a bit developed. So people are starting getting more westernized um, habits, which may explain the increase of the prevalence. So if nothing is done, this situation will keep uh, being like that. And we can see that the only part of the, the region which ha is having an, an increase in the reduction is its women probably because of the lifestyle, probably because of many other aspects that we cannot be able to explore here because we don't have much information about uh, other aspects of the community, which may not be only the lifestyle, it may be also the, the environmental aspect, the rainfall, we are talking about the sun and, and also the, the forest, the green space that they have. Um, the, it may be also because of the community, in that community people usually run, because if you are in, in Kenya, like here, uh, people have been uh, hearing about Kenyans run a lot, but it's like, it's just an habit that people do such thing. And um, in, in, in the detection of the higher uh, prevalence of, of, of hypertension in one region, this can actually be a, a reason now to, to take action and go to that area and see what can be done. And also we can tailor the, the, the intervention based on exactly 
what we want to see. Because if we just think about um, um, uh, individual level aspect, it will not help us because many other factors which are not documented yet as the risk factors could have impacted the, the, the hypertension of our patient. And we will be working just only on the individual level while we were supposed also to think about how is the person doing in the community? Where is the person living? And uh, um, what, what kind of weather do you have there? And uh, what kind do you have a green space, green, green space, or what are the kind of things that you have there? So it's it's critical to 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 do such analysis. But doing a good modeling could be a, a better things. But at this stage, itself just as a first step and an awareness for all the scientists in the rooms to think about. Um, cardiovascular disease when they are thinking about your special analysis and uh, it could be something that would be helpful in terms of intervention and defining intervention for us. So um, for this uh, talk I've just used a few references that you can have there. I, I will share the, the, the link for my presentation later on, so you can also have a, all those things. But before I finish, I have to once again, uh, thanks AfriMap Hair for giving me this great opportunity. And I, I will not um, stop without um, uh, thanking my R mentor, which is Prof. Nolo uh, Gay Gisler, who has been uh, a great um, support. By, uh, my my cheerleader is uh, my wife who can just accept for me to be coding throughout the night and after coming from 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 the office and this is not something because uh, normally my full time job is uh, is more of management uh, stuff and uh, so she's she's a really supportive wife. If you want to contact me, yeah, you can get in touch on on my personal website, which is just my full name, Bodhi Maximale. You can get me on Twitter, on, on, on LinkedIn. And uh, I found it some years ago, held this argument, but you may be hearing it more and more now. It's more of the training on data science, health data science uh, specifically, and also clinical research. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Um, I think that's, uh, that's it. I, I don't mind um, if you have any contributions as well. And if you, you have also any concern about what I just shared. And of course, if you have questions, I, uh, you, can, you can ask your questions. Thank you. <laughs>